live stream is over on our Facebook page. Once I click this little button here, like a smart person. And um, I'll let Nicole and Laura take it from here. They're doing a little bit of a warm up. They're doing this presentation tomorrow at one of our new construction homes. Um, and so when we knew they were doing that tomorrow, I was like, why don't you guys come on and preview it online today? So they're going to give you a little bit of what they have going on. Um, both of them are really great at connecting, um, on social media. I enjoy following both of you. Um, so authentic, but also very curated, um, styles from both of you. So thank you for sharing your brains and, um, I'll turn it over to you guys. Um, I think it's going to yell at us one more time, letting you know it's being live streamed. So just tell everyone you're good with that or get out and uh, we'll rock and roll. Um, all right. So this is, um, this is just kind of our little landing page for the event tomorrow. If you guys haven't registered yet, please register now. The QR code's right there. And Laura made an Eventbrite link so we can kind of get a head count for food and all because John is catering it. So it would be nice to know how many people will be there for sure. Laura, do you want to add anything about tomorrow? That pretty much sums <laughs> it up. I was going to say the same thing at the end. So there'll be another slide if you miss it at the yep. end. Okie dokie. Uh, also, if anybody wants to screenshot things as we're going through, I'm I'm totally comfortable with you screenshotting my slides. That's fine. There's nothing. I mean, it's not super groundbreaking, but you know, it's just kind of the basics. So I call this um, the dynamic three framework. I just think that that kind of like sounds sexier than what it actually is. It's pretty simple, like I said, but it really just kind of helps you figure out um, like, you know, you're on social media, but you just have no idea what to post or where to begin. So you can kind of follow these three categories or pillars to um, help you figure out where to go. Um, a little bit about me is that, hold on, I'm putting the baby monitor on the floor. <laughs> a little bit about me. Um, I moved here in 2022 from New Jersey. And in New Jersey, for a long time, I was a teacher, sold real estate part-time. Um, after COVID, I left the classroom and I, I said, you know what, I'm just going to dive right in. And I followed these strategies, had my first over a million dollar listing. And then it kind of just like kept snowballing from there. So um I, I just kind of continued doing what was working. So these are the three pillars to your dynamic three framework. You want to either educate, document, or connect. So I call it dynamic because you kind of can use it interchangeably and they, they blend together. You can kind of make it your own. Um, but there's some specific ways that I look at each section. So um, the first one I, I like is educate. And this, this one's important because everybody knows what is it, at least five realtors in their sphere, at least. So some people might know you and they know that you're, they trust that you're a great cook. They trust that you're a great friend. They trust that you're going to drive them to the airport, but they don't necessarily fully trust that, you know, your stuff a thousand percent to sell their home or to help them with a purchase. So when you're putting out educational content, this could be in email newsletters, it could be on social media, it could be even be um, informing people on Facebook groups like about the neighborhood, responding about a restaurant that you've been to, and if you know the owner, and just educating them about the area and about your industry helps them learn, okay, so Nicole is not only a great friend, but she's also a great realtor and she does know how to sell my house or or a hairstylist. She does know how to cut my hair. She's not just um, a fun person to be around. Next up is document. I included my Costco trip pictures here because as silly as it is, these are things that I post on social media that get a lot of engagement because every people either love Costco or hate Costco, but that's okay. It's okay if they hate Costco because it's still it's still driving up my engagement on posts, stories. It's te it's teaching the algorithm. You know, this person is interacting with Nicole, so let's show them more of Nicole's content. Um, I like to mainly do this, like I said, in the stories, and I just link my Instagram and Facebook stories together. So if you're following me on both, sorry, you're seeing the same post twice. But some people aren't uh, Instagram users or aren't Facebook users, so they get they get that content either way. Um, a lot of stuff that I document isn't necessarily all about real estate. This is kind of more of what I'm cooking for dinner or what, you know, if 
Chloe had a blowout. Just relatable, relatable things. Chloe's my daughter, by the way. And then last is connect. So this is arguably kind of the most important part of social media. It's showing the algorithm that you're connecting with other people. So if somebody posts that it's their daughter's fifth birthday, that's obviously something that's important to them. So think about that. Like if things that you post are typically things that are important to you, things that you want to show off or achievements or, you know, goals that you've hit or just like what you're doing in the day. Like I love when people engage with my Costco content because I love Costco. So Connect with people that way by just showing, putting your two cents in on what's important to them. And that helps grow the no like part of the no like and trust. This is also just showing you the difference between a personal account and a professional account. So on the, on this side right here, this is my personal account that doesn't get any use, but you see my professional account, it has a professional dashboard, which we're going to talk about in, I think our later um, sections of the series, but you can see which posts are getting more engagement um, by like shares, views, likes, all of that kind of stuff. So we can show you how to do a professional dashboard in the later series. There you go. This is going from a personal to a professional. This is how you do it. And then really the bottom line is you just look at your feed, who you're following, whether it's realtors, whether it's other small business owners, whether it's friends, what kind of things are you finding yourself watching or rewatching or commenting on or liking? And then just kind of implement more of that into your business um, on social media, but make it authentic, make it you. You know, you don't have to just use a stock photo or a just just listed, just sold photo. Um, and Laura is going to talk more about that, how you can really make it authentic to you. And that's it. That's that's all I got. Oh, sorry, Laura. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> um, so you're sharing your screen. Do you are you gonna forward my slides? I can't hear you. <laughs> I want to just switch. Do you want you to, uh, you can share it just in case. Okay. I lose okay. It. okay. Let me stop sharing. All right. Sorry, guys. Um, how do I stop sharing? Oh, pause share. Hmm. I don't know. Is it showing There's, mine? There should be a stop button at the very top of your screen where it says like stop sharing. There we go. Eli, ooh, for the win. I was sweating bullets back here. I was like, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I hit pause share, but then it wasn't letting Laura connect her. So, okay, there we go. Is when mine now, sharing can... now? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, thank you, Nicole, for that. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure that my screen doesn't have all these things that are distracting me on it. I went backwards. Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, let's see. Before I get started, I want to share that I asked ChatGPT to give me a funny and relevant virtual icebreaker. And um, here it is. I want you all to find the most amusing real estate related GIF. Um, or emoji and drop it in the chat and let's see who can find the most creative and hilarious one. And then you can go back and look at them all and laugh today, get you in a good mood. Um, anyway, while you're doing that, I'd like to thank Nicole again for her insights um, into being authentic on social media. And now um, let's take what we learned from Nicole and apply it to Instagram. Um, I'm going to discuss how I started using Instagram to create reels, um, but also how I stayed authentic to myself in the process. All right. So uh, first, a little about me. I'm Laura Masters. I'm a realtor on the team at Anna Powell Real Estate in Fuqua, Verena, North Carolina. I've been on the team about six months, and I got my real estate license a year and a half ago and started working immediately as a solo agent. So I was not on her team when I started. I was out on my own. And in, in the um, 
total year and a half that I've been an agent, I've sold 13 homes with just under 6 million in sales volume. And um, I know that really doesn't mean anything to people who are not in real estate, but um, in the first year as a solo agent, the whole year I sold four homes and that was mostly from my sphere of influence or actually 100% from my sphere of influence. And then the remaining nine homes I sold since joining Anna's team six months ago. So that's um, the power of a team. Also, in addition to being a realtor, I'm also a mom. I have an 18 year old daughter who's a senior this year and soon to be heading off to college. I have uh, boy girl twins who are eighth graders and soon to be headed to high school. So um, we got some big, big transitions coming up this year. And I'm married. My husband and I will be celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary in April, and we're taking a big trip to Italy, so I, I really cannot wait. Um, so also, I'm a dreamer and a doer, so I like to wonder about things, think about things, and um, wonder about how things can be done better. I like to think about that, and then I like to do it, so I don't worry too much about how to do it or how, how it gets done, just as long as it gets done. And um, I have to work extra hard at that stuff in the middle, like uh, making sure it's done correctly and completely. That's, um, that's hard for me. So um, I really, like, for example, this particular talk, I had to practice it a thousand times just to make sure it was good. So anyway, um, also I like to make new friends and meet people. So don't hesitate to say hi to me if you see me out and about. All right, so. A few more basic things about me. I've lived in North Carolina my entire life. I grew up on a tobacco farm in Kernersville, North Carolina, which is a small town between Greensboro and Winston-Salem. I've lived here in the Triangle area of North Carolina for 22 years. We've lived in Fuquay Marina, North Carolina since 2016, which is a sub suburb of Raleigh, which is of course the capital. Uh, fun fact, I'm a coffee drinker. Um, I drink coffee all day and I uh, can't make it through the day without it. So anyway, on to this slide, brainstorming. So what I do best, I like to brainstorm and ponder things like I said earlier. Um, well, I also like to use Canva and social media. So I'm an OG Facebook user. I've been on that platform since 2006. Um, don't get me wrong. I have always used Instagram as well. I just never spent much time there. It didn't have all the uh, bells and whistles that it has now. Um, but I did use to uh, I did use Instagram to find and connect with other professionals and businesses when I owned my own little farm to party business called Bumble and Branch that I started in 2015 and ran that till about 2021 when the pandemic kind of took over parties. There weren't as many people uh, partying and having weddings, so that kind of fell by the wayside. Um, also an OG Canva user. I started using Canva around 2015 um, to design the gift tags, logos, and other marketing materials for Bumble and Branch. Um, I'm a visual person, so I really like getting my thoughts out using these platforms. Canva helps me organize my thoughts in a creative and visually satisfying way. And Facebook's been there to help me share them with my friends and family. I work best in small groups uh, with one or two people. That's really where I feel most comfortable. I tend to shy away from being in front of large groups. I get overwhelmed when I know lots of people are watching me. So I'm also something called a WT. That's short for wonder and tenacity. And those are my working geniuses. If you don't know about working genius and you want to know more, I highly suggest you watch this video of Anna Powell talking about working genius. The concept is life-changing, especially if you're working on a team. Her talk is linked at this QR code, and it's fantastic. So in the last six months, um, since I'm an OG Facebooker, that is naturally where I felt most comfortable. The majority of my family and friends are on Facebook, so when I transitioned into selling real estate, it was naturally the platform I used to begin marketing my business. That means most people who were contacting me to buy and sell real estate were seeing me on Facebook. Of course, I did some other marketing efforts like pot buys, um, which is fun for me because giving gifts is my love language. But to stay top of mind with my sphere of influence was easiest and most effective for me on Facebook. 
realizing that Facebook and social media in general were bringing me business, I decided I wanted to provide more and better content for my sphere. I started using the Instagram app to create reels. Um, Instagram has a fantastic video editing tool right there in it where you can upload or record videos and edit them um, right in the app, then instantly share your videos from Insta to Facebook. So you're really only working in one app if you start in Instagram, which is a huge time saver once you get it set up to auto post. First thing I did was create what I call a Vanna White Reel. And um, I got really great feedback on that, a good amount of views and even a couple shares. So in these videos, I would go to a listing and have someone video me, video me on my phone. Um, I would welcome the viewer at the front door into the listing. Then the camera follows me around while I point out different features of the home. I wasn't talking in the videos. The idea of talking on camera made me nervous. Other people are so good at it, but I didn't feel comfortable. I wanted to make reels, so this is how I felt best doing it. I was just smiling and pointing in a cute dress and shoes, which is where I feel comfortable. Um, so I got great feedback on this, and I decided that this is what I should do, and I committed to teaching myself how to make good reels, researching and learning in the editing features in Instagram. Of course, this is time-consuming. Um, let's see. I haven't gone. Oh, wait. Sorry, guys, let me back up. So um, time consuming and I got busy with selling homes. So I didn't want to stop making great reels and providing excellent content to my sphere. So I decided to use a content creator to help me execute more professional looking Instagram content. If you're interested in doing the same thing, I'll talk more about my content creator at the um, talk tomorrow and about how I found her. All right, so I know most people think you have to be an influencer or have tons of followers to be successful on Instagram, but I'm here to tell you it's not true. You only need the right followers to be successful. And the way to attract the right followers is to be authentic, like Nicole was saying, you need to be authentically you and be authentic to yourself. Like I said, I didn't feel comfortable talking on camera, so I, but I did feel comfortable putting on a cute dress and sneakers and some red lipstick and Vanna Whiting on camera. So I was being authentic to myself and it showed people like my Vanna White reels and asked to see more. To me, that is success. I did not need, I don't need the entire world to follow me. I just need local people who know, like, and trust me. Those are the people who wanna buy and sell homes with me and they are the ones I'm trying to reach with my content. Let me go back one. Okay. So sure, figuring out how to post reels on Instagram may seem complicated. Don't get me started on that algorithm thing. That's very, very confusing. But anyway, that's why I'm opening my playbook tomorrow and revealing my simple four-step guide to creating Instagram reels. So tomorrow I will give a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a reel. I will teach how to get people to stop scrolling and watch your reel using hooks. And I will teach you how to find and use trending audio to reach more viewers. So uh, also I'll discuss a little bit on the latest info about hashtags and the algorithm. And here we are again at the end, well, it's not pulling up my, my QR code for tomorrow, but I'll go back to, I'll pull it up somehow in just a minute, but here's the QR, it's gonna be the QR code again, and lunch is being provided by John Wilkerson of Movement Mortgage. If you plan on coming, please register so we can make sure we get the right amount of food so we can feed everybody. And thanks guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, by the way, I'm going to look in the chat and see if we got any funny memes. Oh, we did. You're going to really like mine. <laughs> so, girls, since we have a few people that are out of network, um, can you just back up a hair on, uh, don't go too deep, but can you give us a little bit of preview content, Laura, on your slides? Just because we have some folks in South Carolina that 
probably see that. Probably won't make it um, to well, Andrew, I will, Carolina, although we'd be glad to see all of you. <laughs> I am going to have my, the whole thing um, shareable. So I'll be able to share that huh. with anybody that wants it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go step by step into how to create a reel. So, you know, most, most people probably, I don't know, probably already know how to do that. I've heard from some people that they just don't know how to do it. Um, some people that's just not where they naturally, you know, know what to do. So I'm going to step by step, go through it. Um, if people are inter not interested in staying for that, that is going to be like a separate section to the talk tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I will definitely share my, my uh, guide. Perfect. What, um, I don't know, what questions do we have from folks that are on? Ashley, do you have any questions? Ashley, I need your questions, Ashley. My questions are, why does my kid keep pestering my dog? That's why I've been on mute. <laughs> Nobody's kids are in school today here. <laughs> yeah, so fun. <laughs> um, questions. No, uh, so I know you said you've really focused on social media in the last six months. So what, what have you seen that's actually come to fruition and focusing on that versus, let's say, outbound prospecting or something else? Since I am relatively new to real estate, um, I have the entire time I've been, I started using Facebook as soon as I became a real estate agent and I was marketing myself there. The other methods that you're talking about weren't even something that I was using because previously when I was a solo agent, I, just, I had no clue what I was doing. I was just like, you know, you go and you get your license and then you're just kind of thrown into it. And so I was using Facebook and it was successful for me. That is, I know that 99% of my four deals that I had in that first year were from people who saw me on Facebook talking about my new business. Um, but since I transitioned to Instagram, I've had a lot more people message me, talk to me, um, and make comments on that the, that content. And um, I feel like it's this, you know, it's my same sphere, but I'm sending this stuff that I'm creating in Instagram over to Facebook where my sphere is, and they're seeing it there. And it's, just leveled up a notch it's a little more professional and I think that um gives them that trust factor that Nicole was talking about do you guys struggle with the um I think we all have this conversation do you guys struggle with that feeling of constantly looking for content and like, you know, that whole thing of like, oh, well, I don't want to be on, I don't want to be like tied to my phone in moments of my life that are passing through. I mean, Nicole, obviously eating a hot dog in the Costco parking lot, probably not one of those moments. <laughs> like this was a treasure of a time that I'll never get back. But do you guys, I mean, do you struggle with that? Like keeping up with social media, Ashley, and I talk about this all the time. I know Victoria Goins is on the call. We talk about this sometimes too, like just this like, feeling of like, okay, well, I've got to keep up my content. It's like a monster. Like, how do you, how do you kind of compartmentalize? Like, this is for business. This is for my, you know, personal life. Like, can anybody talk, kind of speak to that? Cause I think we all struggle with it. Cause my husband does it too. He's like, oh yeah, put it on Instagram. Right. Like it didn't happen if it's not on Instagram. Um, but like, I do, I feel like it's hard to know. Sometimes it's work. Sometimes it's because I just want to share my life. Sometimes it does get in the way of me being authentic in moments. I think that's always a really great conversation to have when you're using social media as a business building tool. So I, I don't have the answer. So I'm just curious if someone here has some, some deep soul searching insights on how you balance these things. 
So uh, I'll chime in here. This is Victoria Boynes. I'm in South Carolina. Um, I'm a solo agent here, but I feel like I'm part of this team, Anna's team, and Ashley's team, call group. Um, but <clears throat> I feel like for me, as my Instagram following has grown, um, that is, Anna, something I've really struggled with more is how do you stay authentic? But also I've, I've wanted to pull back some. So I don't share my kids the same way I used to when I didn't, when my followers were only my friends and that sort of thing. Also, I feel like the platform has shifted and become so curated that that also makes me more hesitant to then want to share kind of what we'd consider real and authentic content. But the reverse of that coin is I love it when other people do. So that's like a, a struggle that I have. Like, how do I still preserve this brand, but also be real? And then kind of what, how, how far out do I go with that? Right. So do I share myself cooking dinner or do I share what beauty products that I like, because I'm not an influencer. Am I just sharing that to be real or is that not relevant? Are the people that are following me for Instagram interested, in, you know, real estate interested in that? You know what I mean? So that I think is very much a struggle. If I could chime in here, Victoria, it's nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I lost you guys for a minute. I don't know what happened. So, um, but so I like to kind of focus on five pillars. Um, so I only talk about real estate 20% of the time. All right, Chloe. <laughs> and then I talk about other, other things that interest me you know, the other 80% of the time, because a lot of the time to build that, the no and the like, you want to see things that you have in common with people, right? Like, so me and my husband are polar opposites. He would never hire me as his realtor. He's very engineer mind, like just show me the stats, just show me the data. And, you know, I would never hire him because we just wouldn't drive in that purchase. And I think showing those other sides of you kind of give you a taste of like what it would look like to work with this person as a person. But I, I hear what you're saying though, as far as like being too lifestyle versus real estate. So funny thing, I just, I saw um, someone talking about this this morning on Instagram about how things are actually going, you know, it's like everything takes a trend. Same thing with houses, all the paint colors, cabinets, all the things. So the new thing now is we're so sick of the curated content that they basically it's the what's getting all the, you know, people to watch and grow their accounts is just doing like vlogs. Like, what am I doing in my day? Like people want to see you be authentic. They want to see your day. Um, there was a guy that works a nine to five and he shows you his whole day. There was a guy that was a... Um, like a multimillionaire showed his day. And then there was someone that's like a YouTuber. And so they were just talking about how they show their day. And that's their main, like, that's what things are going to start turning to. So if we can get ahead of the curve and start going like day in the life of a realtor, it doesn't even need to be curated. Like put it on, you know, put it on your stories or put it on, take some content in your story during the day and make it into a reel. And I think that's what's going to get traction because it looks like that's where people are going to. Like now we're sick of, everything being so curated and all the graphics and all the things people want more real. So I think if you're just taking videos of houses of, you know, you fell or something, you're like taking a video of yourself on the ground or crawling in through a window, like people want to see the fun real life stuff. And that's usually what we get the best content on like a Costco run, like you said, or, you know, showing light fixtures before and afters, like all the real stuff, focus on that just take the content throughout the day. And then when you're sitting there at night, post it. I literally got more engagement yesterday. I think it was yesterday or the day before when I posted that I was stuck in my jacket zipper. Like the number of people that reached out and they're like, oh my God, I'm so relieved to see that you're out of your jacket. Like it was, I was like, I can't believe that this content, like I honestly almost didn't post it because I was like, someone's gonna be like, why does this dumb girl posting this on social? She's so dumb. We don't care. But like when I posted that I was freed from my stuck zipper on my jacket, like I literally had people I haven't talked to in like a year. <laughs> like a kid I went to high school with was like, thank God. I've really been worried about you today. And I was like, what? Like, that was so nuts. And it, it wrote, that's why I asked the question. Cause like, normally I'd be like, oh, I shouldn't post that. Like that has no, there's no, like, you know, there's nothing to it. Right. So it's just noisy. 
Um, but oh my gosh, to reconnect with some people over my zipper jacket this week was like very eye opening for me. <laughs> and Gary V always says, right, document, don't don't create, just document. He's been saying that for years. And he just he's like a billionaire by just saying the same thing over and over again <laughs> for years. Yeah. <laughs> that was probably our nugget. That was a big yeah. nugget for the day. Document, don't create. Because we are. We're. I think that's where people get struggled is they're so worried about how do I make this look the way that I want it to look? And I think when you're doing it for business, you can get stuck there. But um, most of us are already, you know, we're successful already and people want to know, what are you doing during the day? Um, so I think that was a great nugget. Document, don't create. Maybe that's what we'll call So maybe we'll call this training session. We put it on YouTube later. I wanted to add that it's that what I've noticed is that document, the documentary type information and content is in stories. And that's where you put it. And that's what kind of grabs people is those stories because everything's so fast paced and people don't really have time to go look at your account and like pour through all your curated content. But once they stop on your story and you give them something that interests them, and they decide, oh, maybe I want to look at this person a little bit more. That's when they'll go over to your, your, your page or your, you know, your profile and read a little bit more. That's where I think you may still want to have your curated content because that's where people are coming to get their information and to see what kind of business you're running and what kind of stuff you're providing. So I don't think you necessarily want to get rid of that curated content. It may not be trendy right now at this moment, but like all trends, they come and go. So if you could you know, like, don't go through and like delete all your curated Canva stuff because right now there's something trending because that'll go away too. Um, but I've, I've, I think that stories are really, really a great way to get that, um, that goofy content or if you don't feel comfortable like I don't feel comfortable being goofy necessarily so um but your day-to-day -day, like your day in the life kind of stuff um document that in stories and the rest goes into your uh curated stuff down in your in your feed and if you I, struggle oh, with that content particularly like the popping on your phone and like telling a story about what's happening um, one of the big things I've seen is um, leave off the introduction, right? Like don't start those stories with like, hey, it's Anna. I just thought anytime you just start with, I just wanted to come on here, like just immediately cut it and start again. Like get rid of the, I just wanted to come on here because you're already setting up with that initial thing that like, hey, like this probably isn't relevant, but I just wanted to come on here. So that's been a big thing for me. Um, I, I'm pretty good now and comfortable on video, but I took a spell. I think Ashley, you and I both kind of did like where I feel like I haven't been on social video as much lately. And even in the last week, I found myself like kind of starting back with like, I just wanted, and I was like, no, like get that. Like that cannot be the opening line of every time you go to make a video on social media, you have to get rid of it. And should we share, we can share my freebie on the screen if you want. Cause it has the like prompts of things to post for each category. Yes, that would be great. So we can, Laura, do you have that? Cause, oh, no, never mind. You stopped sharing. <laughs> Let me see. Anna, do you want to get it or do you want me to get it? Oh, I can pop it up. Hang on. Okay. I'll work on that. I heard someone else starting to talk when I cut them off. I don't know if it was Ashley. It probably was. So I'll throw something else out to the group while you're popping that up. So um, early on, I had grid success kind of sharing my day to day especially um, if I were previewing any listings and that sort of thing. And I've had to pull back on that lately um, with, um, it seems like there is more of a focus and, and I'm even hearing this in our um, weekly state meeting with EXP, but around making sure that you are not promoting a listing that's not yours. And so that's something I've struggled with. And people tell me all the time, like, hey, I miss it when you used to like walk through homes or whatever with us. Um, and so I wonder kind of, if you guys are just thumbing your nose at those rules, or if you're like me and you're like scared to break a rule. And so you're, you've held back on that content too. What if you get permission from the list agent? Like if you just say, Hey, I'm out touring homes. No, you yeah. can't. So I would, I would always do that too. I always got permission. Right. Um, huh. I think that's like goes without being said. So I would always have permission, which is why I felt comfortable doing it. I still personally feel comfortable sharing that. What I'm afraid of is getting my hands slapped for promoting 
a listing that's not mine, even with permission. And I always give credit. I think that's one thing that we don't talk about enough is like giving credit where credit is due. So I'm always really good about like, if I'm showing somebody else's listing, giving credit, tagging, that sort of thing. But um, I don't do it anymore because I'm scared of that. So um, I'm just curious. Do we guys... have that same rule in North Carolina? Because I kind of feel like as a, when you're a buyer's agent, you are promoting other people's listings. That's what you're doing so I, I don't know if, do we have that rule yeah I mean I think that it's an, it's actually code of ethics is the violation yeah. um so in code of ethics it talks about like not like you know promoting your listing and I think in the in the perception of being deceiving right like I think I think that's the context of that code of ethics rule that you're passing on someone else's listing as your own. So, I mean, we went through this, there was a short spell where like no one would post pictures of houses they had under contract because you had to have explicit permission from the list agent to share um, that listing photo that was under contract when it wasn't your listing. I think always like, I mean, I have agents when they show our listings, just ping me on the text and say, Hey, can I take some video content while I'm at your listing? And I'm always going to say, Yes, but just remember that not every agent is that way. Place of you trying to pass off that that is your listing. So I feel like if the credit is given, um, I don't, that's an ethics violation, but I, you know, I'm not going to be on the board telling you whether you violate it or not. So that's just my opinion. So it came up in our state meeting again this week and even like on um, a new agent presentation. And she told us even with new construction, new construction where you're clearly representing like, or you're showing a, a builder's house, even then that we could not even just like promote one home that just to get around that and make sure that we weren't violating anything to like promote the community, but not a house. I was so surprised at that because that's again, where I've had a lot of successes around like spec homes, for example. So yeah. Maybe we'll find someone to come on here and talk to us about that. <laughs> it does seem contrary to me because that we're not, we're real estate agents, not like community ambassadors. We're trying to sell real estate. So to not be able to promote a house just doesn't, it seems counterintuitive to me. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've really struggled with it because I feel like that was some of my best content. Well, Victoria, if you need some content, you can come up here and photo video our houses away. Whatever you need. I'll send you well, some I, content. I'm just, I'm just going by what y'all do. So if y'all aren't scared, then I'm going to go back to not being scared. But I'm like, you know, I'm always terrified of breaking the rules. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's one of those things to probably have some open conversations and explore, but the root of it is in our code of ethics. That's where that that rule is coming from is in the, the National Association of Realtor Code of Ethics. So that would be the, the right venue to go ask those questions to. Any other social media questions or needs from our friends online today? One thing we could all do, I think that would help everyone. I mean, drop your Instagram handles, like followers are great, especially when they're in our agent community. So if everyone wants to pop their um, handle in the chat, girls, I could not get, I don't have your slides with those QR codes in there. So someone's going to have to share their screen. Sorry, I know you're kind of waiting on me, but I couldn't find anything of uh, help. But um, in the meantime, if everyone wants to drop an Instagram handle in and give each other a follow. I know some of us are already connected, but um, it's always a great way to stay in touch and see each other's content and be inspired by it. I put the Nicole freebie. dropped the, so yeah. Oh, per. Oh. All right, well. Ladies, thanks for sharing your time this morning. Um, Laura, put your Instagram handle on there too so people can follow you. And um, next week, I don't know who we have because I don't have the schedule in front of me, um, but we will be back here next Wednesday, 8.30. This recording will be on YouTube along with all of our other Wednesday morning recordings. You can always go back and see what we've talked about in the past. 
Um, and we've got a full Empower conference recorded on our YouTube channel. That's Agents Empowered on YouTube. Um, so feel free to to use that. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Welcome. So good to have you this morning. Um, and uh, yeah, follow along. Um, I know Eli's up one day this coming month. I know. Um, I know Allison's doing some business planning and some digging into your whys. Um, we've got, I think actually Hobbs is coming, Lisa, to talk about some real estate investing over the next couple of weeks. So we really tried to make sure that quarter one is full of um, as much information as we can get from our network. I'm always just amazed at how much our people know. Um, and again, this all was you know, created because we kept going west to mastermind. And um, obviously, as you can see, we've got some really bright brains here. Um, right here in the Southeast. So Victoria Goins, I know you're, you're coming up to chat about maybe some why mining as well. Um, so I'm anyways, it's gonna be a great quarter of lots of information. Always feel free to invite a friend. Nicole, Laura, thank you so much. I hope your event tomorrow was smashingly successful and we'll see you guys here next Wednesday. If you have any content topics that you need, feel free to, to ping us on Instagram. Agents Empowered has an Instagram. We're also on Facebook. Let us know what content you need and we'll go get it for you because um, again, it's all about collaboration here. So have a great Wednesday. I hope you go sell lots of houses um, and uh, have a great day.